the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. There's a great section of the Christian church that believes that the priest has been given a special power that when he touches this bread, it actually becomes the body of Christ. The section of the uh, church which is vast, which is the majority of the what we call the Protestant side of Christianity, has two different beliefs. I'll mention them. One say this is just symbolic, and that's all it is. I almost violently disagree. One is called transubstantiation. This bread becomes the body. This wine becomes the blood. But most Protestant churches, and I certainly stand in that group, believe in what is called theologically consubstantiation. That as I take a piece of this bread and I eat it, that by God's own power and by the working of the Holy Spirit, the broken body of Christ comes with this bread and I eat it and the broken body of Christ for my healing comes into me. This bread then is assimilated into my bloodstream and my bloodstream goes to every segment of my body, to my toes, my fingers, my bones, for the blood courses through your body to your skin everywhere. And this bread, the body of Christ, being given to me by the Holy Spirit together with this bread, goes through my blood and suckers every part of my life. And if you have arthritis in your wrist, let the mighty power of the broken body of Christ for your healing get into your bloodstream and see it as it courses and goes to that arthritic power and breaks that power and cancels out that work of the enemy. And the precious Holy Spirit brings the mighty blood of Jesus Christ, which is the blood of God, as it dripped into the sin-struck world with its brokenness and its problems, with its hurt and depression and horror and anger and violence, wars and rape and all the rest of it. And the blood of God dripped onto this sin-soaked world. And as I take this cup of blessing, which we bless, and I commune, with the mighty blood of God, the blood of God. And as I commune with that blood, and I remember, I relive that experience. And this blood goes into every part of my being that's assimilated again into my bloodstream. And if you have a problem with a particular sin, why don't you let the blood of God, Christ, I'm not saying this turns into the blood of God, but the blood of Christ together with this. He comes together with it. It is a sacrament. There's a divine unction on it. And the blood of Christ comes with this blood. And it's going to go into that area of my life that I struggle with. And let the blood of God hit that area and break its power. It will break the power of every devil. I'd like to conclude by saying this story. I have a good friend whom Kevin and Bev know well, Jim Baker. I didn't know Jim all that well. He went through ministry school and went out and started a church in Tamworth, a Christian outreach centre. And of course I knew him, but I didn't know him well. When I came back from America, I was there five years traveling. And I came back and somebody told me, Jim Baker is dying with prostate cancer. So I rang him up. 
And he'd moved away from the church. He hadn't moved from God. He just moved. And, and he sa I said, Jim, how are you, mate? He said, they tell me I've got three months to live. And I forget what his prostate count was, but it was way up high. Like It was beyond the blue. And they, they said, it's gone too far. They can't operate. They can't do anything. I said, well, Jim, we both know one who can help you. And we started to pray. And I got close to Jim after that. And I rang him up quite often, and we believed God together. And then he moved up and to Queensland, he to Bullshire. And I found out he liked fishing, and I like fishing, and we go fishing together. And we kept believing God. We talked about communion, like I'm talking this morning. And Jim said, I can do that. He and his wife, Marilyn, took communion every day from that day on. And the broken body of Christ that healed his prostrate, he took that bread together with the broken body of Jesus Christ in all of its spiritual meaning into the, his prostrate, and the blood fed that prostrate. Did that for some years. And the doctors, said, the oncologist said to him, you're acting strangely, Jim. He said, why? He said, well, you should be getting vastly worse rapidly. But the count is coming down. And we just kept believing, and he kept taking communion. Every day they take communion. It is not a symbolic act. He, he was partaking of the broken body for his healing. By his stripes you were healed. I believe it. I believe it till hell freezes over. Then I'd walk across. Now I still keep believing. I just believe. I didn't know one thing. Believe. Believe and just keep on believing. Uh, anyhow. That went on for some years. Quite a number of years. He rang me the other day, months ago now, a few months ago. He said, Clark, I thought you'd be interested in the oncologist's report. I said, sure am, Jim. He said, he couldn't believe it, so he took a second test. He said, my count is 0 0.02. It started off up near 100. It should be 4. But he's got lower count than most of we men here in this room. 0 0.02. There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power in the broken body of Christ, if you believe it. There is everything is offered and promised to a believer. I don't read of any promise to a doubter. Believe. Faith is the currency of heaven. Doubt is the currency of hell. You choose what will live inside of you. It is your soul. It is your spirit. It's not the devil's. It's yours. If you've got a dog, he's your dog. If you teach him to come behind, he'll come behind. Teach him to sit, he'll sit. If he acts all stupid, it's not his fault. It's yours. You didn't train him. you are got a soul. It's your soul. You tell it to sit, it should sit. You tell it to pray, it should pray. Take authority over your soul. It's your soul. It's not God's soul. It's yours. You bring it into obedience. Sometimes you've got to get tough with yourself. Your soul is giving you a lot of trouble. Slap yourself up the side of the head. Say, you listen to me, soul. You will either knuckle under or I'll slap you again. You do that 20 times, you'll only have to lift your hand and your soul will knuckle up. Absolutely. There's power in the blood of Jesus. And there's power in the bread. So you might have got prayed for once and nothing seemed to happen. 
Oh, my God, now is the time to believe. Now is the time. I was very ill once with my heart, you know. I reckon I was going to die. And anyhow, I was in ICU, and then they let me go to the ward, and it was the first time I'd walked. I don't know why the bloke didn't take me to my bed, but he left me at the door of the ward, multiple ward. And I was just making my way, had my eye on that bed, like I'd had the paddles five times in one night to bring me back to life. And I was pretty crook, you know, pretty weak, and all that stuff. And I just took only a few steps. My eyes were on that bed. It was still about ten steps away. So that I make that bed, I'll be okay. And I heard this voice, Clark. It was the last thing I wanted to hear was anybody who knew me. He said, Clark, I'm frightened. Would you pray for me? And his bed was about ten steps the other way. And I looked at that, and I said, Jesus, the man is frightened. So I went over to him. I didn't know who he was. But he said to me when I got there, he said, I was in a meeting where you're preaching, gave my life to Jesus. He said, they tell me I'm dying, and I'm afraid. I said, mate, we'll pray together. And we prayed. And I felt the presence of a wonderful Christ come down over that man. I said, how you going now, mate? He said, I'm peaceful. I said, look, I've got to go to bed. I'm sorry about that. And I just got my eye on my bed and headed there. My God, my brother, life is wonderful. Life is wonderful. You're never dead till you're dead. If the resurrection's alive in you, you might pop back again. I know I did a bunch of times. I'm okay today. Believe. Believe. When you take the bread this morning, believe that the Holy Spirit, in His own amazing way, has put His presence of the broken body of Christ with that bread. And it's going to assimilate in your bloodstream and go to every area where you're sick. And it's going to knock out the work of the devil. And if it doesn't do it once, next Sunday you'll do it again. And next Sunday again. And if you're really crook, take it every day. At home, by yourself. And, but no, visualize, see that that bread flows into my bloodstream. And it's going against you. I haven't got arthritis in my toe. But if I did have, it's going against you, arthritis in my toe, because the blood goes there. We're going to take communion. Could we pray? Our oh, Father, this bread which we bless, is it not to us the communion of the broken body of Christ? And this fruit of the vine which we bless, is it not to us the communion of the blood of Christ, the blood of God shed for us to wipe out our sin and any curse that lingers over our life this morning as we take it. Holy Spirit, you do what only you can do and put your presence together with the bread and the wine. Amen. Pastor Tim, you know the order of this church. As people give you this bread, remember, it is a holy thing. It is to us the broken body of Jesus Christ. It is just a holy thing. I'd like you, once you take the bread and the wine, and if you could, you just close your eyes. And could you see in this imagination of your spirit, visualize if that's a good word for you, this bread together with the broken body of Christ, 
is going to be assimilated into my bloodstream. It's going to go to every part of my body. My kidneys, my liver, my lungs, my heart, my blood vessels. To every part of me. Bring healing wherever it goes. It does this to a believer. And it helps me to believe, to visualize something. I got that from the Bible. The greats did this. David, Moses, and all the greats. That I see it happening. And if I'm seeing it happening, I can allow myself to experience it happening. And I can feel it happening. I can feel if I had arthritis, the arthritis losing control. Or if you've got an aching back, I can see that demonic power that's afflicting me losing power. Losing power. The broken body of Christ going to that area. And if I say, well, Clark, I don't think I'm sick. Let the broken body of Jesus Go to every part of your body to protect you and keep you well. The wonder of God's protection, the hedge that he builds up around us. Father God, you, the mighty God, are coming together with the bread and together with the fruit of the vine. And in a moment, we're going to eat and drink. Well, if you've already received the bread and the wine, and if you've been following my instruction, which is biblical, why then, why don't you eat and drink in a deep way of communion with the broken bread and the blood that was shed for you. We eat and drink, honoring God. Why don't we vocally together praise him all together? God, we magnify your name. We thank you for this great salvation. We thank you for the ever-present blood of Christ. Thank you for the ever-present broken body of Jesus. We thank you, God, that we can feed on you in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving that you are so good to us. We praise your name. Amen.